Thank you very much. Uh, as I said last year, we fought the feds and we won. We, um, incidentally, my wife, uh, Erlene, and I met while I was her commanding officer in the Army uh, Reserves, and that, incidentally, was the last time she's ever taken orders from me. Well, we're, we're bringing this national protocol to you because uh, we feel that it has validity for all of you who are practicing anti-aging medicine and now frees you up to do it safely based on case precedent and case law. My attorney tells me that because we have now precedent and a not guilty verdict, that all of you now are freed up from this uh, terrible law that existed that HGH was the only drug in the entire drug armamentarium that you could not use, quotes, off-label. And remember, if you look in the PDR, any edition of the PDR, it says that any drug that is approved by the FDA can be used by any licensed physicians in, in an off-label manner. In fact, in medical oncology, 80% uh, of our treatments are off-label. Anytime you're on a second, third, fourth, or fifth line chemotherapy regimen, it's off-label. So we feel this is a very important decision. One of the things that happened, as mentioned on the video, was that during the settlement phase, when the government finally realized they didn't have a case against me, uh, they also found out that uh, the drug I was using was actually an approved drug in their own orange book of approved drugs uh, since 1995. And it had changed its name but kept the same NDA number but it was still the same drug and it had been fully approved, so they hadn't even bothered to research that fact before coming after me and spending millions and millions of your taxpayer dollars, I might add. So when we're on the envelope of medicine, we are targets, and I want to make this point very clear. All of you need to protect yourself, and that's one of the reasons for our seminar today is to tell you about HGH and the law. I have written two books uh, since my verdict. One is called HGH on Trial. The other is called The Secret of the Fountain of Youth and What They Don't Want You to Know About Human Growth Hormone. Both are in the publisher's hands at this time. The protocol which I was requested to write as part of my settlement agreement uh, will be gone over. It, uh, it echoes some of the same things that uh, Dr. Mark Gordon and Dr. Michael Gerber have already talked about but I do feel that this is a good blueprint for, me, for you to work from. And in the trial, uh, it became clear that uh, human growth hormone deficiency syndrome was what uh, is, the per, is the preferred diagnosis of this, uh, according to the FDA. Now, in the process of developing this protocol, uh, we used many endorsing organizations. We also traveled back with my lawyer and his wife, both lawyers, to the Chicago offices of the A4M and met uh, personally with Dr. Klatz and Dr. Goldman for their support and uh, their endorsement. All of these organizations uh, then did endorse my national protocol. So we have a lot of good law behind us, including, of course, the trial law. Now, the mission of the protocol was to expand the use of growth hormone. Remember, any other hormone deficiency in the body can be uh, successfully and, and legally uh, treated by any physician, whether he be a a family practitioner, an internist, an endocrinologist, a gynecologist, what have you. But never has the FDA, and they've always been behind the curve on this, never allowed the replacement of the master hormone from the master gland, namely human growth hormone. So we now have a, a, a protocol for which to lean on and from which to have guidance from and you'll be hearing this afternoon also from my attorney, uh, Kevin Murch, and also the attorney who uh, covers lots of Maverick physicians and physicians who uh, treat uh, outside of the box, like you all do, 
uh, uh, Attorney Jaffe, who wrote a very interesting book called Galileo's Lawyer. So the National Protocol is uh, meant to be the guideline and the blueprint for you to follow and to uh, show to your attorney if, God forbid, you're ever under the same uh, ordeal and circumstances that I uh, found myself under. And it reminded me kind of the other day I heard on the, the uh, Fox News that uh, the governor of Illinois, Blagojevich, uh, when he saw the FBI agents at the door, looked at them and said, is this a joke? Well, that's exactly what I said when I opened my back door and saw 12 uh, flak jacketed, helmeted, and door busting, gun drawn agents from three agencies of the federal government looking me in the face and pushing me back into the house with a gun on my head. So I, I did have empathy for him at that time. So the mission, as you can see, is to provide physicians with a standard protocol sanctioned by the FDA that allows them to act as an advocate for the patient's right for optimal health and freedom of choice in health care. The mission is also to provide recommendations for the clinical use of growth hormone replacement therapy, but only in, the, um, in conjunction with a standard history and physical uh, exam appropriate clinical testing and best clinical judgment. And this is the disclaimer we offer that the use of growth hormones solely for athletic enhancement constitutes a misuse of this hormone and therefore taints its appropriate use. In our protocol, uh, we do go into the fact that growth hormone has been used to treat children with growth hormone deficiency for over 40 years. And let's remember that the childhood dose of growth hormone is seven times the adult dose. So never let anyone tell you that it's dangerous for adults. Uh, again, I'm a Fox News junkie, so I'll quote something else. They had just two days ago an interview with uh, Dr. Jeffrey Life, who's a member of this society and who has the large Genetics Clinic here in northern Las Vegas in the Summerlin area. And this guy's 69 years old. He looks like... Charles Atlas, he's a fantastic development, at least from the neck down. And he was asked, he, he was asked about growth hormone, and they, the scare word, of course, is doesn't it cause cancer? Aren't you worried about that? And all of the doctors we talked to said there are many dangerous aspects to human growth hormone. So we hope to dispel some of those myths today. <clears throat> 